Well, have you guys uh, ever been in a church before where you felt really cared for? Uh, the, the teaching was solid. Um, perhaps you were going through a really hard time, and the, the pastor really came alongside of you. Uh, maybe you felt like you've really been discipled well. And my prayer is that you're, you're finding it here in this church. Now, maybe some of you have been in other churches, I've been in these kinds of churches, where you haven't felt this way, where you felt really let down by your leadership. Maybe you felt bullied uh, by your pastors or elders, and maybe you just felt like your needs at that church weren't being met. Well, tonight, we're going to look at 1 Peter chapter 5, where Peter specifically addresses the elders in their shepherding but then he also addresses the members as well. So I don't want you to just check out because you think this is a sermon to elders and what they are to be doing, because it's also a sermon to you as well, because we have a responsibility. Well, let's turn now to our passage tonight, uh, 1 Peter chapter 5, and I'll read it for us, beginning in verse 5, or I'm sorry, verse 1 through verse 5. So I exhort the elders among you as a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ, as well as a partaker in the glory that is going to be revealed. Shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you, not for shameful gain, but eagerly, not domineering over those in your charge but being examples to the flock. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility towards one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we do thank you for this evening. We thank you for this special time that we get to share together in in seeing the the installation of Luke. Uh, Lord, we do pray that you would speak to us tonight through your word. God, that uh, you would reveal yourself to us and that you would would show us what you require from us. Uh, Lord, we do thank you for the great shepherd, the chief shepherd who goes before us, who has laid down his life for us. It's in his name that we pray. Amen. Well, there's, there's two things that I do want us to, to look at this evening. Um, the first is elders are to shepherd the flock as Christ shepherds the flock. And two, members are to be humble under the lordship of Christ. So I'd like us to begin by just digging in to verse 1. Peter starts off by saying, so I exhort the elders among you. Now, Peter is, he goes from talking very broadly uh, to the church and giving different instructions and so on, now to to really centering in and and bringing it home. And and first, he he wants to address the elders, and then he's going to address the members. Now, now Peter, he, he says, I exhort you, and he could have, he could have started off the section in a lot of different ways. But he says, I exhort you. And I exhort you is a way of saying, I implore you. This is really important, what I'm about to tell you, so pay careful attention. It's important. But Peter doesn't just implore them. He doesn't just tell them to listen up. But Peter says that he is a fellow elder and a witness of the suffering of Christ. So Peter could have lorded it over them that he was the apostle. He was the chief apostle. Christ said, upon you, Peter, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against her. You know, he could have said these things, but he doesn't. He says a fellow elder. See, Peter is putting himself on the same level as these guys at the church that he's addressing. And he says, a witness of the suffering of Christ. Again, Peter could have said how he, he witnessed all of these amazing things that Christ has done. He could have said how he was there at the Mount, at, at the, the Transfiguration. 
You know, he could have said how he saw all these amazing miracles that Jesus did. But instead, Peter says that he was a witness of Jesus Christ's suffering. And what that does is it reminds Peter of Peter's own failure when Christ was suffering. When Christ was at his darkest hour, Peter denied knowing Christ. You see, Peter's reminding the elders here that he is on the same level as them, and just as they struggle with sin, he too has struggled in struggles. And yet, despite these things, he says to them, shepherd the flock. And like these elders that he says to shepherd the flock, he reminds them that just as they are waiting for Christ to return, he too is waiting for Christ to return. And until Christ returns, they are to shepherd the flock. And Peter tells them plainly in verse 2, shepherd the flock of God that is among you, exercising oversight, not under compulsion, but willingly as God would have you. Now, this phrase here of of shepherding or giving oversight is another way of saying overseer. God has placed these people under the care of these elders, and they are to nurture and care for them. Peter tells them that they are to shepherd the flock of God. Now, the primary role of a shepherd, as you well know, right, is to shepherd the flock. And do you remember Peter's dialogue with Jesus after Jesus rose again from the grave And Jesus comes, and he talks to Peter. And three times, Christ says to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And Peter says, yes, Lord, I love you. And Jesus' response to Peter was, every time, was feed my sheep, shepherd my flock. The primary role of the shepherd, the elder, is to shepherd the flock, to point you to Christ the great shepherd. The shepherd needs to minister and feed the flock. And the primary way that they do this is through the word of God. And this is why such a great emphasis is placed on our elders in our denomination about uh, their knowledge of the Bible, because a shepherd is supposed to be able to rightly divide the word of God. And not just rightly divide it, but to be able to interpret it. Now, a farmer, for instance, who, who wants his, his animals to, to be healthy, to grow, he leads them to, to good grass, to nutritious food, the best grass. He, he doesn't, a shepherd doesn't give his sheep thorns and thistles to eat if he wants them to be strong and healthy. Right? Likewise, an elder is, is to lead the flock through the scriptures. One of the problems we have many times is that shepherds, they don't do that. They, 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 only, part, they only preach on, on certain parts of the Bible, the easier things. And in doing this, actually, they're only partially feeding the flock. They're, they're giving the flock some nutrients, but not the, the full diet. You see, an elder is is to completely shepherd the flock and and teach all of Scripture to the people, giving them the full diet. A shepherd also is to protect the flock. An elder protects the sheep by, by, by keeping heresy out of the church and teaching the church what this looks like. He protects his sheep by being an intercessory prayer warrior against the enemy, which if you continue reading in the several verses after what I'm talking about tonight, Peter talks about the enemy, the devil. Well, the shepherd should be praying for the flock against the adversary, the devil. A shepherd is to lead the flock. Now, a shepherd cannot lead the flock if the flock is not willing to follow him. And that's why Peter goes on to say what he says in verse 5, which we'll get to in a, in a minute. But if the flock is not willing to follow the shepherd, then there's a huge problem going on in the church. Now, the shepherd also, as we, we see here, is they are, they are to correct the flock when they go astray. And they don't do this as an authoritarian, uh, but they do this lovingly and compassionately. 
like a father mimicking our heavenly father. An elder doesn't discipline because he wants to hurt the flock, but he wants to see them grow in their love of the Lord. He wants to see them restored. But the greatest responsibility that a shepherd or elder has, as I said already, is to point them to the great shepherd, to Jesus Christ. See, my words are not eternal words. Luke's words are not eternal words. Brewer, our words are not eternal words, but Christ's words are eternal words. They are eternal life, and that is who we are to point you to. Peter tells them in verse 2 that they are not to shepherd under compulsion, but willingly as God would have them do it. Now, I like to think of Jonah here. You know the story of Jonah, how Jonah uh, was told to go to Nineveh, and Jonah didn't want to go to Nineveh, and, and so he rebelled, and he went in the opposite direction, and God sent a great fish to swallow Jonah. And after three days, the, the fish spit Jonah out, and Jonah um, went on to preach repentance to the city of Nineveh. But in that story of Jonah, you read the whole time how bitter Jonah was. He didn't take, great, he didn't take the light in, in, in being the mouthpiece of God. He didn't take the light in knowing that, that God was sending him with this special message, message of repentance and deliverance. Jonah was bitter. Jonah only went because he felt like he had to go. And, and I wonder how many times do pastors and elders do their job only because they feel like they have to do it. They, they, they've lost the zeal. They've lost the love for the flock. And they only do it because they think they have this responsibility and they need to do it. They don't take joy in their work. And when a, when a pastor or elder sees this as only a, a job and they've lost that joy, they, they're actually burnt out. And they're not delighting in the fact that, that God has called them to a noble cause, to preach the gospel. And this word willingly can actually be translated here as being sold out for Christ. This is a really tall order, isn't it, for the elder to be sold out for Christ? Well, you know, the pastor's job or the elder's job can be really hard. And it is difficult, but the question at hand is, are they resting in the Lord despite the struggles and the hardships that they're going through? And if the pastor or elder is, is looking inward uh, to shepherd the flock, then they're going to fail, they're going to get burnt out because the, the elder or pastor, they're to be resting in the Lord. They are to be looking to Christ for his strength. Well, Peter also tells them that a, that a pastor or elder should never minister for shameful gain. Now, and this could be referring to money, and, and we all know of pastors out there who have who've gotten quite wealthy off of their churches. And obviously, this is a wrong motive to be a pastor, but there are many other reasons that guys become elders in the church in things like prestige, honor, respect, power, control. All of these things can be motivations for somebody to become or to seek the office of an elder, and they're all quite shameful motivations, and yet these are temptations that every elder faces, and that's why Peter is warning them here. Now, an elder also should not be domineering. They don't need to lord it over the people that they are in charge of. They don't, they don't lead as to require the people to respect them. They don't micromanage the church and micromanage the people. In fact, an elder is to, to be a servant leader, as Christ was the greatest servant leader. What did we see Christ do? We saw Christ stoop and wash his disciples' feet, the very people that he was to lay his life down for. Well, elders also are not to be, or elders are not only to be servant leaders, but they are to set an example before the flock. And Paul tells us plainly also in, in 1 Timothy 4.12, he says, set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, in faith, and in purity. Well, Peter has really laid it out here, hasn't he, for the elders and what they are to do and how they are to act. And I'm glad he has, because we as elders, 
uh, we need reminding of this. I need reminding of this. When my days are long and hard, I need to be reminded of why I am an elder. And likewise, Luke, you need to be reminded as well. And, and I pray that when the days get hard for you, that you'll come to 1 Peter 5 and be reminded of this. But I also need reminded of why I shepherd the flock. And that is because we look to the great shepherd. And Peter tells them, and he reminds them that they aren't called to just simply do these things because they are an elder, but because of the great shepherd who shepherds us. Look with me at verse 4. And when the chief shepherd appears, you will receive the unfading crown of glory. This is a reminder to us, to us elders, that we don't labor in vain. Christ is coming back and this is the second time in just the, these first four verses that, that Peter mentions Christ's return. You see, we're reminded that we don't do this, this work in vain. We do this for the great shepherd who has called us to this. And, and he tells us plainly that, that they, we will receive a crown of glory. You know, Peter refers to Christ here as the, as the chief shepherd in verse 4. And he could have referred to Christ with many other words, but he chose, specifically chose these words, chief shepherd. And that is to remind us elders that this church is not our church. This church is Christ's church. He is the true shepherd. He is the one who truly feeds, cherishes, disciplines, grows, and guards All of us serve and are cared for under the great shepherd. Well, he, Peter does put it out there pretty plainly for us of what is expected of elders, doesn't he? But he doesn't stop there with just the elders. He also wants to address the members as well. And it brings us to our second point. Members are to be humble under the lordship of Christ. Look at verse 5. Likewise, you who are younger, be subject to the elders. Clothe yourselves, all of you, with humility toward one another. For God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Now, first of all, Peter here, he's not referring to um, the actual age of a person. Uh, This is a metaphor. And he's basically saying, any of you, whether you're old or young, who are under an elder, that you are to clothe yourselves in humility, that you are to submit to those God has placed over you as a shepherd to care for your souls. And he tells them to clothe themselves in humility. Now, clothing yourself in humility, the image we get here is is actually a putting on of humility. You're putting it on, And, and, and that's because humility just doesn't come naturally to us, does it? We're so prideful. This, this goes against our very fabric, doesn't it? Putting on humility. But, but Peter says you got to put humility on. Submit to your elders. And the reason this is so hard for us is because we think we know what's best for ourselves. The elders don't. But he says humble yourselves. You know, it does take humility to submit yourselves to someone else. Because in our pride, we think, I can do better than that person. But remember, this putting on humility comes right after Peter's just given instruction to the elders. And quite honestly, if the elders are shepherding you uh, the way a shepherd should shepherd you, it's not so hard, actually, to put on humility. But sometimes it can be really hard to shepherd or, or to put on humility, especially when you don't agree with your elders. And Peter doesn't say here that the elder is always going to to be right, thus you should follow him. Peter simply says to humble yourselves and to submit to your elders. And this is because you're not submitting to man, but you're submitting to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Remember why Jesus Christ has put elders in the church to begin with. It's because Jesus Christ cares for you. And he, he wants to shepherd you. Now, obviously, there's 
you know, if your shepherd, your elder is, is telling you to sin, you're not to follow him into sin, and that's not what I'm talking about here at all. But we have a problem, many of us, because we come from this very proud heritage. We, you know, after all, you think of the Reformation. The Reformation was, began as one man um, rebelling, so to speak, against his elders, Martin Luther. And uh, so we come from this proud heritage of, of questioning everything. And, and it's so easy for us to, to just put everything our elder does under the microscope and, and to really, you know, just check and, and, and make sure that they're dotting all their I's and crossing all their T's. And what Peter says, you are to be humble. And that is because we all have blind spots. The elders have blind spots, but you have blind spots as well. And we should never think that um, we know everything, that we, we, we have all the answers. You see, God uses the elders to show you your blind spots. But even in those difficult times where you find it so hard to submit to your elders, perhaps because you're in a dis- disagreement over something, but you submit to them. Peter here quotes Proverbs 3.34. He says, God opposes the proud but gives grace to the humble. See, God is going to give you grace as you submit to those he has placed over you to shepherd and care for you as you humble yourself before them. Now, I'm sure that, that not all of you have agreed with, with Brewer at times, Um, I know my congregation hasn't always agreed with me at various times on everything either. Um, But does not agreeing with someone give you justification to not submit to them? And again, if, if your elder is trying to lead you into sin, that's not what I'm talking about here. What we need to realize is that the reason we submit to our elders is because we are submitting to the lordship of Jesus Christ. Christ has given you elders because he loves you, because he cares for you. He is concerned, Christ is concerned with your day to day. And Christ has proved himself to you, has he not? The great shepherd of, of, of the sheep has come and laid down his life for you. He has proved himself to you. And so we can trust him also when he gives us elders to help shepherd and care for his flock. But you know, one of the great things that we see about the great shepherd in this passage actually is, is, a, is a picture of the Trinity. How we see how, how Jesus Christ submitted to the Father by taking on flesh and dying on the cross for our sins. And actually, when we submit to our elders, we are actually mirroring the Trinity to others. As Christ submitted to the Father, we submit to Him. And just as the Father is is pleased with the Son, He is pleased with us because of what Christ has done for us. You see, by Christ submitting to the Father, He's made it possible for us to submit to him. Now, I'm not talking about, you know, in, in Philippians, it does say that um, every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So I'm not talking about a submission in the form of judgment. I'm talking about a willing submission um, under the lordship of Christ because of what Christ has done for us. Well, what can we take out of this passage tonight? How does this apply to us? Well, for one, I hope you see that as Luke is installed tonight as an elder, uh, how he is to shepherd you. And you are free to call him out when, when he is not shepherding you well. You are free to do that. But you don't do it because you want to stick it to him, because you're placing him under a microscope. You, you do it because you love him and you want to point him to Christ. And, and likewise, uh, he's free to call you out as well for the same reasons, because he wants to point you to Jesus Christ. And this is also a challenge to us today as well, because um, we have to ask ourselves, do we, do we clothe ourselves in humility? Do we actually submit to our elders? Do, do we put up barriers and walls? 
uh, and, and not wanting our elders to shepherd us. That we have a critical spirit about us when it comes to being shepherded. But lastly, what we take out from this passage here is Christ, our chief shepherd. We follow our elders because of Christ, who is the great shepherd. And he has called us to submit to them so that Christ might grow us in our faith and love of him. I pray that you are blessed by this message uh, this evening. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for being the great shepherd, for caring for us so much that you would send your Son to come and die for our sins. Lord, it is not easy for us so many times because of our pride, because of our sinfulness, to follow those who you have placed over us. But Lord, we do pray that you, by your grace, would clothe us in humility, that we might submit to those who are over us as Christ has submitted to the Father. And Lord, I pray for the elders here that you would help us to shepherd the flock as you have called us to shepherd your flock. That all of us together, Lord, would look to you, the great shepherd. In Christ's name we pray, amen.